what uh, Putin has done in Ukraine is a game changer, not just for what it says about Russian foreign policy, but I think it has ominous precedental uh, implications for the way other countries may, uh, may uh, behave in the future. And perhaps one country, namely the People's Republic of China, is already behaving. Uh, it's a game changer because Putin broke the rules of the game. Uh, he used unilateral force to extend the borders of his own country. Uh, that's something that hasn't happened uh, in, uh, in Europe uh, uh, since World War. Uh, two, uh, there has been a, I wouldn't say just an implicit, but really an explicit compact that all of the power, all, all nations on earth, certainly, uh, and this must include the, the major powers, of which Russia is one, will respect uh, existing uh, boundaries re uh, as opposed to settling old historical scores. Just imagine what the world would be like uh, if uh, there were to be a contagion of other countries behaving in this fashion. And if you want to see what it would look like, uh, you know, read Margaret Macmillan's book on, on 1914, uh, uh, or uh, look at uh, what happened as a result of, and I, I know that uh, Hillary Clinton got in a lot of trouble with uh, certain quarters for making this analogy, what Adolf Hitler did uh, with the Sudetenland uh, in Germany. Uh, and what Putin has done in Crimea follows that recipe to a T. So it's a big deal. Fiona, you agree with Stroh? Well, I think Putin intended it to be a big deal. So let me take a slightly different uh, angle here and try to channel Vlad the invader um, a little bit <laughs> if, if we can here. Uh, Putin actually, I, I think, you know, if you look back to you know, where you asked started the question about Georgia in 2008, Putin was technically not the president at that time. <clears throat> he was in this rather unusual tandem arrangement that he created with Dmitry Medvedev, his uh, protege, who was uh, stepping in to be uh, president. <clears throat> and it was Medvedev who was technically presiding over this war with Georgia. But it's very clear from all of the reports, both at the time and subsequently, that Putin was the decisive factor in making the decision to send in the Russian troops into, uh, into Georgia, when Mikhail Sakos, really the president of, uh, of Georgia at the time, made an ill-fated decision to return fire to a bunch of rebels in this breakaway Republic of South Ossetia, decided to move in his own troops. Next thing we have the full Russian invasion, and you know the rest of it, we, we know the scenario. Putin was actually, right then, drawing a very firm red line in the sand. And actually, Nick, it was something that you were working on, as I recall, at the time um, in uh, the US government. The Russians had said after the US recognized Kosovo in 2008, just a little bit earlier on in uh, that year, that they weren't going to stand by and let that go. They were actually accusing the United States and the West at the time of doing just what we're saying they're doing now, which is reversing the territorial arrangements uh, after uh, World War II, the end of the Cold War and the collapse of Yugoslavia. Now, everyone here knows, of course, that that was not the case uh, in Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia fell apart of its own. It was in a brutal, bloody civil war that marred the whole period of the 1990s and into the 2000s. And Kosovo was a direct consequence of this because of the uh, inter-ethnic uh, strife and the fears of a renewal of violence between the Serbs and the Kosovo Al Albanians at the time. And I mean, you can speak to this as well, because the decision-making uh, to recognize Kosovo's independence on the part of the United States and the European Union was very difficult and was very fraught. But the Russians, however, still had memories of 1999 when NATO uh, basically intervened in Kosovo and bombed Belgrade. And Putin, Strobe has actually written about this quite eloquently in a, an op-ed piece in the Washington Post not long ago, was beginning his rise into the presidency in 1999. He was the head of the Russian Security Council at the time. And it was very clear that he had a hand in a lot of the decision making about the Russians trying to get their own uh, boots on the ground in Kosovo to try to have a role and a say in what was going to happen next. So it was kind of a channeling of old grievances there. And so in 2008, Putin basically um, very openly said that when Georgia wanted to join in NATO, that this was unacceptable. NATO was <coughs> defined by Putin at this point as an enemy. 1999, the uh, bombing of Belgrade and the interventions in uh, Kosovo and Yugoslavia. And then in um, 2008, the recognition of Kosovo culminating that, you know, that whole period of almost, a, of almost a decade. He signaled it very clearly. He felt we didn't pay attention. 
And so as soon as there was an opportunity, he made a move. And so Crimea is again, I'm, I'm afraid, another part of that pattern uh, for Putin. This time it wasn't NATO, it was the European Union. And Putin was actually saying again that Ukraine, uh, desiring to join the European Union or to have a closer association uh, with the European Union, was going to be unacceptable. And he waited for an opportunity to make that very clear. So he is marking a very clear rupture. He is telling us that the business as usual, the enlargement of NATO, the enlargement of the EU, is completely unacceptable from the Russian point of view. And he is, in a way, definitively ending all of the hopes that we had for Russia's transition from the 1990s and the 2000s, what everybody here on this panel and many people actually I see in the audience have, uh, have worked on in the past, which was the idea that Russia was generally moving through integration with the international economy, particularly closer trade and other associations with Europe, through the various partnerships with uh, the United States that Angela has charted in her book, uh, to somewhere that would be, you know, kind of much more of a partner for us, at least perhaps not a strategic partner, but some country that we really could do business with. And Putin's saying, no, sorry, uh, my vision for Russia and that of the people around us is something quite different. We might have been modernizing Russia, but it's a Russia on its own terms, and Russia is just not going to be another European power. And I think that's really checked all the assumptions that we had for the last 25 years at the door. <laughs>